This is the hook. You should watch this video because you'll see how I made this pretty little graph right here. Okay, all right. Today, the problem is in the real plane, if there's some function f that's defined uh, for values less than a, and some other function g that's defined for values more than b. What is a function that can give you a smooth curve between f and g? What is this spline s such that there's a smooth connection between f and s and s and g? This is r squared, this is y, this is x. Okay, well, we want a smooth connection between the functions, but what do I mean by smooth? In this case, I mean the values at B for S, F, F and S are the same, as well as S and G, and the slope is the same. Let's start writing down some constraints. <coughs> um, F of A equals S of A. Similarly, we want S at B equals G at B. So I'm just going to use prime notation to denote the derivative, which is the slope. So these are our constraints. With four equations, we're going to want four, um, four parameters to vary because uh, we, need, we need four degrees of freedom, right? We need to be able to twist the slope here. We need to, be able to move the slope up and down. We need to, be able to twist the slope here and move it up and down. So we need four independent um, variables in our expression for s. So a good a good first guess, the the good first whatever intuition, would just be a, a polynomial because you can just sort of add new. It's it's straightforward to add any number of parameters. So this gives a nice uh, sort of simple expandable form that is also a polynomial so it's it's fairly easy to work with and also intuitively this this sort of makes sense you know if we have a polynomial uh, a, a cubic polynomial like this like something like this maybe or this goes off to infinity so or or like this so you can imagine that we have any like if 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 uh, the first function f meets somewhere here and the second function g meets somewhere here, then that gives us the whole range of slopes. Like here, g's increasing, here, g's decreasing, here, f is decreasing, and here, g, f is increasing. And uh, like the, you can imagine that this can be uh, expanded vertically or horizontally to uh, further adjust. So it sort of makes sense that this would be a good uh, spline function. Okay, we're assuming that f and g are known, so uh, f, f of a, g of b, f prime of a, g of prime of b will just be numbers, whereas s, we're trying to figure out what s is. Oh, this should be s, not g. Whoops. That's the first of probably multiple mistakes I'll make, but uh, we won't worry about it. Let's uh, expand s out into this form that we made over here expand uh, these expressions out so that we're writing the actual expression for s. So we have um, p1 plug in a cubed plus p2 a squared plus p3 a plus p4 equals f of a and so on. Two a squared plus p3 a plus p4 equals f of a and so on. And with the derivatives just power law uh, on the function s. Now this can be written in a matrix form just so that uh, we don't have to keep writing the p1, p2, p3, p4 again and again. So this is uh, equivalent to after converting the system of equations into this matrix equation um, by just factoring out the 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 parameter variables into here. I can convert it into um, the, 
the augmented matrix form, which is useful for the, the row operations we're going to be doing to find the solutions. We rewrite again, where this is the one side of the equation, this is the other, and we just don't need to write the parameters anymore because we know that they're there. Okay, it's time to start solving this uh, matrix or simplifying it, converting it to a useful form. On this matrix, there's a couple rows that are sort of obvious initially. Um, it seems like we can easily, we want to get as many zeros here as possible. Uh, and, and specifically, we want a, a row that has three, three zeros and then one, um, one other number and then this other number as well. So we want this section to have a row with three zeros. And at first, the first thing that comes to mind is these two numbers are the same, one and one, one and one. So we can just do some simple row operations. Add or maybe subtract row, these two rows from each other and these two rows from each other like this. Row two is going to go to row 2 minus row 1 and row row 4 is going to go to row 4 minus row 3 so we can write that we can write this after doing this operation write it up here Row 2 is going to go to row 2 minus row 1. So, or b cubed minus a cubed, and so on. b cubed minus a cubed, b squared minus a squared, b minus a. And then here we get to 1 minus 1, which is 0. So that is a little bit simpler. And let's try Indy. And then row 4 is going to go to row 4 minus row 3. So this row minus this row. And then again, we have a, a 1 minus 1 situation. So we get one more 0, which is always good to have in this matrix. OK, after this first set of Row operations, what to do now? What to do now? Just draw some lines so they clearly separate, even though it maybe it just adds more noise. Rows two and three each have three non-zero elements, uh, excluding, the, excluding the fourth column. Row four has two non-zero elements. So to get, we only, we only have one non-zero element in one of the rows. So we want to be able to subtract um, one of the elements from uh, one of the remaining columns. We want to either subtract three this element or this element, which means we want to be able to, we want another row that has two non-zero elements. Because that way, the elements that are zero will just not do anything when they get added to these two zeros, and the non-zero elements can be used to annihilate the other elements. So we want another row, we want to turn one of the other rows into a row that has two zeros. Row two and three have three non-zero elements, so this is a good candidate to get, these are good candidates to get a row that has uh, two elements that are zero. We have a one here, a b minus a here, a one's a nice simple number, so let's subtract from row two, let's subtract b minus a times row three, or alternatively add a minus b times row three to row two. Alright, so this is the operation. But so we have the initial b cubed minus a cubed from here. And we're going to add um, a minus b times row 3, which is the 3a squared. 
So that's just the first element. Second element is from b squared minus a squared plus a minus b to a. And then we have row 2 b minus a plus a minus b times row 3, which is just 1. So that cancels out and we get 0. And then we already have 0 up here. And then for the over here we have this expression is kind of more complicated. It's mostly fine, but I do want to note that this right here. Just rewrite it. Which equals b minus a squared. And now that we have these two rows, we have row one and or row two, sorry, and row three, which have two zeros in them. We can then combine these row, these rows to get uh, a row which has three zeros. Wait okay, a second. This um, row two goes to row three minus or plus a minus b row three. Row two is uh, g of a minus f of a. Row three over here has f prime of a. This f prime of a should have been separated right over here. So this should be cross it out because not that much space left. Maybe I'll write it down here with this other note. This is actually okay good. Okay to get rid of uh, one of these elements in either row 3 or row 4 um, this simplifies to over here b minus a squared this all is b minus a squared and right here we have a b minus a, so it makes sense to multiply this row by b minus a over 2 to get a b minus a squared over here, and then we can subtract it from row th 2. Row 2 is going to go to row 2 minus 1 half b minus a row 4. Okay, implementing this, we maybe we can simplify this uh, expression a little bit. We already simplified this down to here, but this one we can simplify a little bit. So we have from here. Okay, now that we've simplified it a little bit. Let's rewrite this matrix and apply uh, this operation. Okay, now that we have this uh, row right here, which has uh, all zeros. We could go further and continue some, and continue um, doing row operations until we get just more zeros everywhere. But at this point, I think it's probably more ink efficient to just start solving without matrices. From row two, we have p one times this expression equals this expression. Everything here is known besides P1. So P1 simply equals the ratio of this and this. Mistake, this should have been G of B. G's always go with B's, F's always go with A. If I wrote otherwise, it's incorrect.
So this is the first, the value of the first parameter, all in terms of other uh, known values. What else? Row 4 has, it contains parameter 1 and parameter 2, so let's try to solve for parameter 2. From row 4 we have, so this is writing row 4 uh, in like the whatever, I don't know what form it's called, but this is the equation form with the parameters included. And then parameter 1 is known, so we're going to solve for parameter 2. Row 3 next has uses parameter 1, which is now known, uses parameter 2, which is now known, and uses parameter 3, which is unknown, so we can solve for that. Solving for P3. And there's not even any ratio here. That's the third parameter. And fourth parameter from row one. P1, A2 plus P2, A squared plus P3, A plus P4 equals F of A. And this we, we found P1, we found P2, we found P3. P4 is unknown, we can solve for that. P4 equals us. And that's the final, final parameter we're looking for. Here's the spline, right? Made up of P1, P2, P3, and P4. We've just solved for P1, P2, P3, and P4 in terms of a, B, F, and G, which we know. So then we can simply plug those in. This is the ideal. Let's see how it looks. The black curve is the spline function. The green curve is F. And the red curve is G. And as you can see, it, it smoothly connects. You can change the functions. I just chose sine and linear, but you know maybe we can make it constant. We have something kind of interesting like this. It's not perfect in that it doesn't look good everywhere, but it always it always is technically correct. One case I found is the exponential function, where if we, if we zoom in, we can see that yes, it's technically it's smooth right here, but if we zoom out, you know, it, it looks pretty sharp, you know just so that it can meet up over here. But, I mean, we just chose a polynomial because it's it's simple, it's simple, it's well known. Um, that could be changed, maybe to a better function, uh, which, I don't know, maybe it would be hard, maybe it wouldn't, I haven't worked on it. But it's pretty good. If we're not doing something crazy like this, where it shoots way up, maybe even if we, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's not perfect, but yeah. Here's my cubic spine. Hope you learned something.